Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I want to tell you why I think you should play Mage going into Phase 2 of Season of Discovery. A little bit of history about myself. I have been playing WoW since its release, and I've traditionally been a Warrior main. I play Warrior in Retail WoW. I play Warrior in Wrath Classic. Even got Shadowmourne recently. I may have even been raiding on multiple Warriors at the same time during Classic and TBC Classic. For the first time in over 20 years of WoW, I am not considering myself a Warrior main. I am a mage main in Season of Discovery. While I do have a warrior alt in Sod, my mage is definitely my focus. I am having a blast on mage. But what's crazy is a lot of the reasons that I'm hyped about mage aren't even in the game yet. Phase 2 will enable mages to do so much more, and that's what I'm here to talk about. Why mages are going to be amazing into Phase 2 and beyond. Throughout my entire time of playing WoW, I have always had a mage alt, and this is the same for a lot of classic players. Mages are by far one of the best and most fun gold makers in the game. I have always funded all of my characters from my mage alt. Even before runes, mages were soloing massive pools in ZG, Mara, Slay Pens, and more. Whether it's from the open world or instance farming, mages have always been incredible at making gold. With the new runes, mages have gotten the ability to heal themselves. When I first heard this, I knew it was going to be insane for farming, but it's way better than expected. If you've seen any of my farming videos, you know mages are able to face tank massive amounts of damage while doing insane amounts of DPS with Living Flame and Living Bomb. I've been able to do some incredible things I was never able to do before in Classic. Massive elite pools without improved Blizzard, soloing entire instances with ease. Mages are already incredible at dungeon and gold farming and we don't even have a lot of the talents and spells that make farming easier. Which is what I want to talk about next, talents and skills. In Phase 2, we get access to some incredible talents and skills by level 40. In terms of farming, we get Ice Barrier, Ice Block, and Kona Cold. All three of these are going to be huge for solo dungeon farms, as well as massive open world farms like the Bandits and Tenaris. While we can already use Improved Blizzard now, our current mana pool makes it not worth it compared to just Living Bomb spamming. It's possible that Deep Frost Blizzard builds become the best for farming and solo content in the future. In terms of PvE though, this is where things get most exciting. In the Arcane Tree we get access to Arcane Power and Presence of Mind, which are huge for PvE DPS and healing. These talents are the main reason I am excited to raid on my mage in Phase 2. You'll see people raiding as Frost, Fire, and Arcane, but you'll often see their talents will be deep into Arcane for Arcane Power. We also get Mage Armor, which will help massively with mana issues. We also get our first Mana Gem. But it's not just these talents and skills that are exciting. Other classes get amazing spells as well. Priests get access to Power Infusion. Druids get access to Innervates and Moon Kenora. And Warlocks get Curse of Elements. All of these will enable mages to do better in Phase 2. Did I mention the fact that in Phase 2 we also get the ability to conjure the best water as well as sell portals? This will be a very good passive income. Always is. On to runes. This is where things get most exciting. This is obviously all speculation, as we do not know how many new runes or rune slots we are getting in Phase 2. Here is a small list of incredible mage spells that could be coming up in Phase 2 or future phases. Water Elemental Invisibility Slow Alter Time Mirror Image Arcane Barrage Hot Streak Dragon's Breath and possibly one of the most anticipated runes in Season of Discovery, Time Warp. All of these runes would be massive game changers for mages. Invisibility for saving yourself from death in a failed dungeon run. Water Elemental is great for controlling large amounts of mobs with the range Nova. An Arcane Barrage would be a great addition to the Arcane Rotation. Dragon's Breath and Hot Streak would make fire more versatile in PvP and PvE. Could also see Hot Streak have instant cast flame strikes, and mix with the Mana Return Dagger from Mara, Oh boy. Then there is Time Warp, which would be unreal. For those that don't know, shamans get bloodlust and heroism in TBC. Eventually, mages get an equivalent spell called Time Warp. Since shamans are horde only, if they ever do add bloodlust to the game, you can bet your fanny mages will be getting Time Warp. Time Warp would not only make mages required in each party for alliance, but in terms of farming, it would be huge for killing massive AoE pulls much faster. 
There's also the possibility of other classes getting powerful runes we would like, such as Replenishment or Manatide Totem for the Alliance. You've got insane amounts of gold making potential with farming dungeons, farming the open world, selling water, and selling portals. You have the ability to solo a lot of dungeons for your pre -bis. Insane spec versatility with all trees being viable as well as the ability to heal now, and tank if you want to call this tanking. With the other classes getting amazing new things to help fill our weaknesses, now is the perfect time to roll a mage. If you're thinking about leveling a mage, check out my 1 to 25 speedrun. I was able to level a mage to 25 in less than 10 hours. But that's it. Thanks for checking out the video. This is part one of a three part series I am doing. Next up is why you should have a paladin alt in Season of Discovery, followed by why you should play on Chaos Bolt. If you are interested in either of those videos, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you are notified when they release. Hope this convinces more people to check out Mage, even if it's only as an alt. Please like, share, take care everybody.